friends, welcome back to my channel. Today, we are talking about design styles that should not work together, but somehow do. Um, so, this is for all of you people that are out there that have a partner or a significant other that maybe your design style is slightly different than the other and you don't know how to match those. Or maybe you just don't want to be confined to a design style and what the design gurus say have to be the elements of it and you want to know how to mix different design styles. This video is inspired by my sister and my brother-in-law. Um, my sister is very eclectic, very bohemian, and my brother-in-law is ultra modern, and they have a really hard time mixing those two design styles that traditionally don't pair well together. So I've got three different design mashups, if you will, for you today that we're gonna talk through what are the core ideas of and concepts of those original two designs and what do you do to mash them together and make them work so that it doesn't just look like a whole lot of chaos happening in your room. So let's get started. All right, mashup number one is going to be French Provincial as well as modern Scandinavian design. So let's break it down a little bit. Let's talk about what French Provincial is and what modern Scandinavian is. So French Provincial, this is, these are some elements that you see commonly throughout French Provincial design. You see rustic wood tones. And when I say that, I mean, you know, pre-war wood beams and floors, they're normally like patinaed and have characteristic or character to them. Also, a lot of times they're natural wood tones. They, they're not really red, they're not really yellow, they don't really go dark. They are just like this perfect, amazing color that looks weathered and worn, but not disheveled. Also, in those floors, you're gonna see a lot of parquet. Now, I'm not talking 1970s parquet, hear me out. We're not talking the little square boxes that your grandparents had throughout their house. We're talking beautiful hardwoods that have been skillfully crafted into like a herringbone pattern or potentially even like borders around the room. Like really true, like true designed flooring that adds depth to your space. Also, you're gonna see a lot of filigree and decadentness to this, um, decadence rather. So you're gonna see this through like ornate mirrors that are typically gold. Um, you're also gonna see it in moldings on the walls and you know, plaster medallions on the ceilings. Also, I got Delilah right here. Hey girl, she just had dinner, so she's happy. Um, so you'll see it through a lot of ornateness through the moldings, you'll see it on the medallions, on the ceiling, plaster work. You're also going to see muted tones and white walls. And you're gonna see a lot of natural light that floods in. Okay, so for modern Scandinavian designs, there she goes, design elements, you are gonna see muted tones as well. You're also gonna see a lot of natural wood tones. Um, Scandinavian design is a lot about sleek and modern and putting form and function over beauty or maybe finding this balance between the two, but it definitely is minimal in style. You're not gonna see a lot of color interjected or a lot of like ornateness to it. It's gonna be very, very simple. Also, because of where they're located in the world, they don't get a lot of sunlight during those winter months, so they want to capitalize on what natural light they do receive throughout the year. So you're gonna see the designs really focusing on capturing that natural sunlight and utilizing it. So again, that's where white walls kind of play in. Obviously, if you know anything about color theory, black absorbs color, lighter colors re reflect color. So, you know, that's why your house in the winter months may seem super, super bright if you get a lot of snow um, because the sun is shining and it's reflecting off of that. So white walls kind of mimic the same thing. You're gonna see um, simple modern design furniture. Again, form, over fun form and function over beauty. You are gonna see a lot of decluttered and minimal spaces. You're gonna see some wood accents because they really like to bring nature in. 
And also sometimes you'll see a very bold pop of color. So if you wanna mix these together, here's what I suggest you do, or at least consider rather, is look for warm wood tones, warm natural wood tones. So kind of that perfect Goldilocks color in the sense that it's not too yellow, not too red, just right. You're also gonna to wanna to do minimal styling. I would suggest, you know, having those ornate moldings and ceiling medallions and floors be the hero in the space so that they can really shine, right? I also would suggest painting all of those in a nice, soft, muted, neutral color, preferably white. You want to try and balance that ornateness with clean line furniture. I think that makes it really, really successful. Also consider bringing in a pop of color, like maybe a cobalt blue or a dusty mauve and like carrying that through your space just to add some vibrancy to it. And then what I think is super successful in all of my inspiration photos that I have found, I think what really works is when you have those ornate ceiling medallions and then you just get this ultra modern, like almost mid-century modern or space sage style light and that just the juxtaposition between those is just amazing. It's so good y'all. Like if you don't like it, I get it. It's not for everybody. But I love having that, that style clash because I think it gives you interest. I think it brings in talking points and I think it evokes emotion. You might evoke some negative emotion, but you might evoke some nice emotion in the sense of people being like, I never would have thought to put that together, but somehow it works. All right, mashup style number two. This is an homage to my sister and brother-in-law. This is Bohemian design an ultra modern design. So, Bohemian, where it originated from. It actually originated, I did a little research because I wasn't 100% sure. It actually originated in France in the 19th century and it was greatly inspired by artists, writers, performers, and nomads. Bohemian style is all about melding different cultures and traditions and heritages into one space, right? So it is about world travel and eclecticness and experiencing all of these things and bringing it all into one. So some of the things that you'll notice in Bohemian, true Bohemian design, not the most recent common boho design, it's all about embracing the unconventional, right? So you're gonna get a relaxed style. You are going to, you know, like there's not really rules in Bohemian per se, there are some like guidelines and some consistency throughout it. So like those things are what I'm talking about, but by no means do you have to do this. But traditionally you see white walls, then, or neutral, and then you see that paired with like bold, rich jewel tones. So I'm talking cobalt blue, emerald green, magenta, a deep, rich plum, maybe an ochre yellow, like, and then that's paired with all different types of metals. So brass, silver, copper, all of it. All of it goes together, nothing clashes, right? I mean, in this design style. You're also going to see a mix of patterns and textures and of different areas. So you might have like some Turkish rugs with Moroccan tapestries or lights. You might have, it's just an eclectic mix, right? Like anything goes, which is amazing. You're also going to get some of that pattern clashing and scale and size and color, and that's what gives that depth. There's going to be global influences. Obviously it's about bringing different heritages and cultures together, which is wonderful. Um, you also get the sense of lower furniture. So you'll see a lot of poofs, a lot of low lying furniture, a lot of day beds. It is all about relaxation and comfort. And you're gonna see things that get a second life or have a second home. So a lot of well-worn furniture, one of a kind pieces that are not really, like you can't just go down to the store and get them. You have to like curate your design style. Also tons and tons and tons of ambient lighting. So lamps and lanterns and mood, like really to create this mood, right? And then 
end all be all plants. Every kind of plant, doesn't matter what kind of plant, but what's really great about these is the green from your plants acts as a neutral and it helps to give relief and it helps to bring in some of that nature to help balance the bold, vibrant colors and the pattern clashing. And it just gives your eye a place to rest. So on the flip side is modern. And there are some similarities, interestingly enough, between modern and bohemian. And one of them is low furniture. So if you've ever gone into mid-century modern stuff and you sit down and you can't get out of the couch because it's so low, or at least me, I'm six foot tall, y'all. Like, it's hard to get out of low furniture. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, I, I struggle because these knees, after playing basketball and volleyball, they're just, they're not as strong as they used to be, okay? So, but also you're going to see a lot of clean line furniture in modern design. You're going to really see a lot of natural light flooding in. You see that in both designs you are also going to see a lot of open floor plans, which I'm not a fan of open floor plans, but with the right design style, I think it works. And then a lot of the depth and texture and interest that comes from modern is mixing different textures. So like a shiny metal and a leather couch. And, you know, normally it is found in a monochromatic color story like white and gray and black you're also going to see some natural textures such as concrete and wood and types of things but for the most part it's going to be pretty subtle all right so if you're going to mix these these are the things that i think work well together go ahead and paint your walls white let that you know you need something for your eye to rest right consider an open floor plan because think about it a lot of open floor plans, you have to create these spaces within it because you're not shoving all your furniture up against the wall, right? So consider low furniture and mix in like low modern couches with poofs and rugs and create a conversational area. You know, it's all about connecting. I, I feel like in the Bohemian design style, it's all about connecting and sharing your travels and your experiences and you do that through conversation, right? And so if you create this like sense of like coziness and relaxation and a space to kind of gather, I think it could be really great. Also, if you're gonna have those plants, you need a lot of natural light. So that kind of goes hand in hand together. You know, I would say mix your metals and you know, I, maybe pick one or two, but I think you can mix them like like in the bohemian style consider an abundant of patterns and colors and also art and i think you can get creative in your art i think a lot of times we think of bohemian art needing to be like hand drawn like maybe obscure portraits but consider doing abstract paintings Consider doing pop art and adding in that color. I think that could be really successful is if you have all of these wild, crazy textiles on your ultra modern couch, and then you have like this amazing piece of pop art that has modern clean lines in it, but pulls the color from the other side of the room. I think it could be phenomenal, y'all. Like I think it could be really, really good. Mashup number three is California Cottage. California Cottage. Now, these are two relatively newer design styles that I haven't, you know, in the last 10 years, right? Some of these design styles have been around since the 19th century. Others have been around since before then, but these are newer. So let's start with California. So California design is all about relaxation and comfort. It's informal furniture, such as leather, slouchy couches, white slip covered couches. You know, you want a lot of furniture pieces in this design style. Do you have clean lines? Because California does kind of have a modern-esque, I think you see more modern design in California than you do anywhere else. So there are still nods to that, but it's all about this comfort, like plopping on the couch, being able to spend the day with your family and just enjoy it, right? Also, you're gonna see a lot of natural materials, wood, rattan, jute, seagrass, um, linen, pottery, you name it, it's gonna be in there, right? So like, this design style also has a muted color palette. So like white, cream, tans, taupes, maybe a little bit of gray in there. But for the most part, you're not gonna see a whole lot of color in California design, California Coast or California Cottage, or not California Cottage, 
California relaxation, whatever you're gonna call it, California style, you don't see a lot of color. It's very, very subdued and tranquil. You're also gonna see light wood floors and you're gonna see a natural color palette. So, so a lot of natural materials, natural wood tones. Again, it's kind of like the Goldilocks that it's not too yellow, it's not too gray, it's not too red, it's not too orange. It is like the perfect weathered color. So that's California for you. Now, cottage. When I think of cottage style, I tend to think of English cottage, which reminds me of the 90s where we all had patterned wallpaper that matched our drapes, that matched our bedding, that matched the bow in our hair. If you know, you know. Now, that's not to say that it can't be done well. And I do think that cottage aesthetic kind of came on the scene with Cottage Core and Grand Millennial. Like we saw a resurgence of this because a lot of the things that you can find in a cottage design style have a second life, which also mean that they are a little bit more affordable because you can thrift it. You can Facebook marketplace it. You can give it a glow up. You can do all these things to it, right? Like if you found a piece of furniture or a couple of pieces of furniture or whatever. So I think a few of the key things about cottage design style is painted furniture. I think we also see muted color palettes. So like maybe it's all neutrals with like a couple of pastels, right? So I think that's where you kind of get into it. Like painted kitchen cabinets, maybe your nightstands are painted, maybe your dresser or entertainment center is painted, right? But like maybe it's a soft sage green or a light cornflower blue or maybe a petal pink. I also think that there's pattern mixing that happens in cottage design. So not in the sense of like boho, because I think boho is very, very strong about their pattern mixing, but think about like an open, you know, a stripe with a like larger scale flower, pat floral pattern, or maybe it is an open window pane plaid that has a little bit of green in it and then it's paired with a ditzy floral wallpaper. Like I think, you know, that kind of pattern mixing where you're using scale but there's a consistency of color throughout it and so it doesn't really clash but they kind of coordinate. I also think that, you know, both styles of California and Cottage give this light airiness to them and are really, really successful in that. So it's all about like feeling comfortable and feeling at home and this warmth and this hug that kind of like encompasses you while you're while you're living in the space and weathered finishes. So I think again, you might get some rustic wood tones. You might have some weathered wood that lean a little bit more like beachy or like maybe there's some scratches in it and like that patina of being lived in is actually what gives the character. So if you're gonna mix these styles, this is what I think you should do. I think you get clean line sofas, either slip covered or leather. Um, you stick to a neutral color palette, always, 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 but you interject it with some color and or potentially a wallpaper. Now hear me out, I know people think wallpaper and they think permanent, but there are a lot of removable wallpapers out there that are renter friendly, budget friendly, and can really make a big impact. And I'm not necessarily saying do it all over your space. Maybe you have a space that has wainscoting and it goes around the, the edge, right? And you just do the upper half. Or maybe it is that you put pattern in your curtains and then everything else is kind of like subdued. Or maybe you put wallpaper behind your headboard. You have a very clean, modern, you know, upholstered headboard and then you want that pizzazz through like a big overscaled pattern. I think there's ways to do it that make a lot of sense and have impact without feeling overpowering. I also think that you can maybe paint your nightstands or your TV stand or your headboard or your dresser and really make that one or two pieces that are painted a focal point. Now, I would not go heavy in this. I think I would pick it, I'd be selective, I would do it purposefully. But, and again, for all that is holy, please do not paint furniture that has really great finishes on it. Like you can still interject wood heritage pieces and like secondhand pieces into this. Like those warm toned woods are great. Now listen, if the varnish is gone or you know, it's missing some of the veneer, I'm not saying you can't paint anything, but consider using Restore Finish to, to fix those little areas if you can. It is an amazing product. 
This is not sponsored by any means, but Restore Finish, get at your girl if you want me to, to, to be sponsored because I use that stuff all the time. It's amazing. I've turned so many people on to it and it is such a great product that really does work. Also, get yourself a jute rug. That brings in texture, color, pattern. It works across both design styles. Consider keeping some baskets. Consider keeping some wood tone furniture in there. I think you can really make a space feel warm and inviting by doing a few of these things, um, especially if that's the style, you know, you want this relaxed, you know, comfortable space. I think it, it works. I think this style can really be a mix of new modern furniture or it could be like quality pieces that you found listen like sometimes again i think cottage core caught on because new quality furniture is hella expensive by not great furniture you're going to be replacing it breaks is busted you know all that kind of stuff so i do think that there is some longevity some sustainability situation or some sustainability um benefits to going this route um, but of course, yeah, it's your home. You can do that in any of these, right? Like the Bohemian, you can buy things that have had a second life. Even the French Provincial and Scandinavian, there's so many things that are online and Facebook Marketplace that you can get pretty much any design style that you want. So that is all I have for today, guys. Let me know, did you like this? Does this help you at all? Are you struggling with your partner to figure out how in the world to blend your design styles? You know, if you are, I strongly suge suggest writing down what yours is, what theirs is, and then picking out commonalities and also picking out polar opposites. Like, for instance, the French Provincial and Scandinavian design those are very on the opposite end of spectrum, but there is something so nice about clashing the ornateness with the simplicity that just works, y'all. Like that juxtaposition is amazing, in my personal opinion. So anyway, tell me in the comments below, are you, are you trying to figure out a design style and are there two styles that you're having trouble mixing? Let me know, I'm happy to help with this. Would do, love to do a part two of this video. Um, with different combinations. Also, are you just kind of, you know, do you like designing in what the the structure of the design style is? Like, do you only like mid-century modern and you don't really like blending in stuff? Like, tell me below, I wanna know. Um, Cause I'm very curious about that. Or are you trying to push the envelope and trying to mix things? Like, just let me know in the comments below. If you liked today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up click that subscribe button, come back every Saturday morning. I upload once a week, 6 a.m. so you can grab a cup of coffee and meet me back here next Saturday for a brand new video. And I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.